So why doesn't the Prime Minister turn his plane around, get back to Ottawa, do his job and get his government back to work? We're here working for Canadians every day. That's our job. We're going to keep doing just that. Nine days in, both the government and union representing a third of public service workers are stalemated. They're dug in over wages, with the government holding firm at a 9% raise over three years, something the union has repeatedly rejected. Let's talk about this right now with our front bench panel of former premiers with me this evening. Former BC Premier Christy Clark, former New Brunswick Premier Brian Gallant, and former Nova Scotia Premier Daryl Dexter. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Uh, Daryl, I'll start with you because our, our co-panelists were, were not with us last week we first started to talk about this strike, we had a pretty spicy panel where Stephen McNeil basically said the Fed should call an election over this issue. Uh, one week later, Daryl, do, do you think that either the government or union has uh, been able to get the edge with public sentiment? Has there been any kind of change from where you sit? Yeah, well, it's difficult to say. And I think the biggest problem for the union, and this is why you're seeing kind of these ancillary actions or, you know, uh, um, kind of third party sites uh, now being picketed, is because, um, you know, generally speaking, the public at large is just not paying that much attention. And, and you know, that's, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I think people tend to see all of these things as some kind of a tug of war. Uh, you know, the reality is that the only the real the only thing that the union can do is try and escalate and and you know create more heat on the government to uh, um, to get back to the the bargaining table and to make uh, some movement on the on the question of wages and I really think that that's you know despite the fact that there are I think there were 570 issues on the table to begin with I, I really think it all comes down to, to wages in the end so we know that it's going to likely land somewhere between nine and twelve percent and you know, really think that uh, that ought to be a resolvable issue. I, I think that's why it's a bit curious, Brian, that, that it hasn't moved at all, right? And, and, and I say that because basically in the last 48 hours, the union says, oh, we've moved twice, though they won't say by how much. And the government has been very public facing about saying we are not prepared to move. Strategically, why do you think that is? I have to say that, that I think Daryl's on to something. Let me just start off, though, by disclosing my, my spouse works for the federal government. She's on parental leave at the moment. She's with Fisheries and Ocean, so I want people to realize that as I make my comments. But I, I do think Daryl's on to something in the sense that not not sure this is really sort of the top of mind issue for a lot of people. I'm in Toronto at the moment, the Public Policy Forum banquet, and uh, the chatter, you know, people like to obviously talk about what's going on uh, nationally and in Ottawa, and, and I haven't heard anybody talk about the strike yet. I was in Ottawa just earlier this week, and you can certainly, while you're in the core, feel that it feels like in, in that bubble a big issue. So to Daryl's point, I, I think he's right. I, I think maybe that the government is sensing that Canadians aren't really turning yet to, to, to favor the uh, the union's position. Uh, and as Daryl mentioned, they're now looking to sort of escalate things, as, as, as I think that they even use that word in some of their communications with their members to basically try to garner some more attention. So if government feels that the public's not really paying attention to this issue, they're not sort of sore about it, at least not yet, maybe that's helping them stand firm with their 9% over three years. Is there also something to the idea, and, and all three of you would have way more experience with this issue, that they are facing other negotiations down the road, Christy, right? This is, this is not the first public service contract, not the last, rather, public service contract they're going to have to negotiate. If they too easily move off of what they've offered now for this, does that set kind of a, a, a risky precedent for them going forward? Well, if I thought that anyone in this government was capable of long-term planning and actually having a strategy for good management, I would say absolutely. They want to make sure that this is the, they set a mandate for the public service across the board and nobody goes over it. And you certainly don't want to go over it in your first negotiation. But keep in mind that apparently the federal government is continuing to pay the striking workers and they get their strike pay while they're walking the picket lines. So we don't even have a government that is um, able to manage the basics of how to you know, deal with uh, a work stoppage, which is each side has power. Which One of them is you don't get any wages from your employer if the longer you're out on strike and the strikers say, well, you don't get any services from the people that, that we represent. But the people that aren't providing services are hurting the federal government and Canadians, um, you know, to, to try and, uh, to try and meet, get their needs met. But 
they're still getting paid by the federal government. It doesn't cost them anything. I just think this whole situation is so bizarre, and I really, I take it as um, a, a look inside the g this government's kind of failure to plan ahead, their failure to really build systems that work. There is no one in the federal government, apparently, according to the union, who's able to figure out the payroll system to stop the unions from being unionized workers who were on strike from being paid. I mean, this just is a level of rank incompetence. I mean, I I was premier for a whole lot of strikes in British Columbia. We have a lot of strikes that happen out here. And I'll tell you, these kinds of details would not have escaped the attention of management before we decided to get into a labor negotiation that could end in, or that could that could have um, have a have a labor disruption in the midst of it. Daryl, I'll get you to weigh in, and I'll just I'll just sort of clarify because I too saw those headlines and uh, made sure I tried to get some more info. Like I, I emailed the government to find out is this accurate. And basically, what the Treasury Board responded with, and they sort of released a public statement to this effect, was that they they are not actually paid for the days that they're striking. It's that the you know the cycle is like two weeks behind basically. But then there's also some reporting that shows because of Phoenix which is, you know, culpability lies among two different governments, I will say. Because of Phoenix, they might still get a few days uh, and then have to claw that back later on. So I do take Christie's point about it's not like there was a ton of planning done in advance, but I don't think it's that, uh, at least from the clarification I received, that the, they're actually going to be, at the end of the day, paid when they are on strike. Uh, yeah, undoubtedly. And, and, uh, but I think the point that you made earlier, the one around the question of pattern bargain, bargaining is absolutely the, you know, that's, that's what uh, they're looking at. They're looking at it for a number of reasons because they do have a lot of other union contracts that will be out there and up for negotiation. So, um, you know, that, that will set a standard. And, and the, the, the union officials have made no bones about this whatsoever. And they see themselves not only as setting a, a pattern for other unions within the public service, but they see it as setting a standard that that um, uh, unions, whether they're in the public sector or the private sector, will all want to see uh, matched. They're going to say this is the standard um, uh, that um, that now has to be met. And uh, the, 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 the federal government's also worried about you know, the whole question of, you know, yes, we have uh, high rates of inflation. I think it was 6.5% last year. Um, the, the, uh, the problem, of course, that they're trying to deal with is whether or not these higher wage uh, concessions will also continue to fuel inflation. And that's, that's a worry that they have uh, as well.